Hovering on the edge of mystery and intrigue, Iran's aerial ambitions have been an enigma to the world for decades. I personally had the opportunity to intercept a jet flying out of Iran when I was flying combat missions in the Middle East, but I'll get to that story at the end of the video. For this video specifically, we're going to highlight Iran's aerial ambitions, where they've come from, where they are now, and where they may go. And that is going to illustrate what we as a world will deal with as Iran continues to up their game and tries to be a force in the Middle East that can assert dominance in the skies. Iran's aerospace narrative in recent decades has kind of been a mosaic of resilience and ingenuity compared to what they have done in the past. Constrained by international sanctions, Iran has embarked on a dual path, ingenuously maintaining its eclectic fleet of pre-revolution Western aircraft while simultaneously striving to develop indigenous aviation capabilities. This journey has been marked by both setbacks and triumphs, often veiled in secrecy and controversy. And we're also going to get into why some of this secrecy may revolve around the reliability and the ability for the Iranians to actually maintain maintain any aircraft that they have. And a smattering of aircraft that have passed through the Iranian Air Force may be a sign that the aircraft they have are not going to have the longevity of other air forces around the world. So as we dive into the complex narrative of Iran's Air Force, we unravel not just a story of aircraft and arsenal, but a saga of strategic ambitions, geopolitical maneuvering, and the indomitable will to ascend in the high stakes arena of aerial warfare. So when it comes to aerial warfare, what I always like to say is never underestimate the enemy. And in this case, Iran may one day be a formidable enemy. But we have to train like we fight and prepare ourselves for the fact that Iran actually might bring more up to the dogfights and the long range beyond visual range fights that fighter pilots may see in the future. So how did Iran actually get here to this place where they may actually be a formidable enemy, potentially taking on Russian Su-35 fighters in the near future, or even at the time of this video being made, they may have already been delivered in secret. But Iran's ambitions for building a stronger air force show how committed their country is to becoming a more prominent power. Iran has been actively running an air force for nearly a hundred years. And as we will see, this look into their history of Iran's air force highlights some things that we might not know. The formation in early years, 1925 to 1940, the formation of the Imperial Iranian Air Force started actually in 1925. And that was a significant milestone in Iran's military history. But during its early years, Iran really relied primarily on European nations for its aircraft. And then during the 1970s, Iran really began involvement with North America. The Imperial Iranian Air Force underwent a period of significant modernization and expansion, largely due to Iran's close alignment with Western powers, particularly the United States and Canada. This period was marked by substantial military purchases and agreements that enabled Iran to acquire some of the most advanced aircraft available at the time. And the U.S. ended up giving Iran the F-14 because the U.S. saw Iran as an ally that could counter Soviet threats in the region. So not only were they given the F-14, they were also given the F-4 Phantom, which is essentially the pickup truck of fighter jets. <laughs> but then in 1979, there was a huge break off of relationships between Iran and the United States. And that was due to the Iranian Revolution, and it marked a significant turning point for Iran's Air Force. They transitioned from Imperial Iranian Air Force, IIAF, to the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force, IRIAF. This revolution catalyzed profound changes in Iran's military structure and foreign policy, leading to the purging of officers and personnel with perceived loyalties to the Shah or to the United States itself. In the 1980s, Iran found itself in the middle of the Iran-Iraq War. During this war, the IRIAF encountered significant challenges due to its lack of preparedness for extensive combat. Iranian jets, including the aging but reliable F-4 Phantom II and F-14 Tomcats, were actively used in offensive operations against Iraqi targets. It's a widely known fact that the IRIAF faced a critical shortage of parts and materials for its jets. That's a consequence of the strained relationships with former Western allies and the embargo on military equipment that it suffered because of that strain. It's almost like they were trying to keep an old car running with spare parts that they just built themselves or maybe saw a YouTube video that 
told them how to build it. But one notable instance was the Iran-Contra affair, where Iran secretly obtained military supplies from the United States. It was basically like your neighbor refusing to lend you their lawnmower and then secretly sneaking over in the middle of the night to mow your lawn. <laughs> but who knew international politics could be so neighborly? Anyway, this period saw Iran's air force operate with a significant reduction in resources and capability, and it essentially drove itself into the ground. Today's video sponsor is Private Internet Access. They're a VPN company, and if you can't tell already, I love acronyms. They're a company that protects your browsing data, and ads like this help me do this full time. So thank you in advance for checking them out so I can provide these videos to you for free. Private Internet Access protects every bit of your browsing data. And if you don't have a VPN, it's essentially like a text message thread where everybody can just see what you're up to. Instead, with a VPN, it protects what you're doing, protects your personal information, and today this has never been more important. But one of the coolest things is that it can actually help you access more content with Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, and the other major streaming services because these streaming services actually limit some of the content that you can get in certain geographic locations. So you can change your IP address to any of the 50 states and one of 91 countries, and this helps you access even more content from these streaming services, which is just awesome. One of the coolest things though is with one subscription, you can protect every single device in your house. And if you click the link in the description now, you'll get a 30 day free trial plus a special discount just for Max Afterburner subscribers and viewers. But you should be a subscriber. The 2000s basically started the period of self-reliance for the Iranian Air Force. Post the Iran-Iraq war facing those continuous embargoes and isolation, Iran prioritized self-reliance in its military aviation sector. This led to the development of indigenous aircraft such as the Hesa Saka, a domestic produced fighter based on reverse engineered American technology. Iran's collaboration with Russia intensified as well, leading to acquisitions like the Sukhoi Su-25. Iran's push for indigenous military tech is not limited to reproducing existing models, but extends to innovations and upgrades tailored to its specific defense needs, marking a significant shift in its defense strategy and capabilities. This leads us to present day and an enhanced collaboration with Russia. Some say this enhanced collaboration is due to the fact that Iran is sending hundreds, if not thousands, of autonomous drones to Russia for the Russia-Ukraine conflict. So in a tit for tat, Russia is essentially allowing Su-35s to be produced by Sukhoi and being sold to Iran. The delivery of the Su-35s from Russia mark a massive turning point in the Iranian Air Force. If they do get the Su-35s, then they will have fourth generation fighter jets that are capable of going up against any fourth generation fighter jet around the world. But that's not the only thing. The biggest thing is a constant flow of parts and supplies from Russia and from Sukhoi that can keep this fourth generation force up and flying and therefore match Iran's aerial ambitions to be a contender in aerial warfare in the Middle East. And the Su-35 is essentially Russia's pride and joy. Now, Russia has some advanced tech that they've tried to put up there, like the Su-57, but thanks to Maverick, there's two less Su-57s flying around right now. <laughs> but ultimately, the Su-57 is not the workhorse of the Russian Air Force. It's the Su-35 and certain variants of that aircraft, which are fourth-generation fighters, much easier to maintain, and the numbers that they're produced in actually give it the ability to make an impact and make a dent if they were to go up against another nation's Air Force. So on a personal note, I trained to fight the Su-35 pretty much every day of my life as a fighter pilot, and this is definitely a formidable enemy. So let's talk some specs on the Su-35. The Su-35 isn't just fast, it's lightning fast. It actually clocks speeds over 1500 miles per hour. So it's essentially a variant of a Formula One car of the sky, and it can go up against the F-15C, the F-15E, the F-15EX, any other fourth generation fighter. It's kind of modeled to be Russia's version of that. Now, when it comes to who's going to win in those engagements, I've got other videos here on YouTube that you can watch to see my opinion on that. But a lot of that is going to come down to which pilot's getting more flight time per year, 
which pilot actually has more knowledge of the weapons they're carrying and who can operate those weapons under high stress, very strained combat environments. But here's the ironic twist. So I ran after years of making do with old aircraft that essentially had eight track players inside of them is now being handed the keys to Lamborghinis. But there's a catch and most likely this is why we're seeing lots of different trainer aircraft emerge in Iran's Air Force. Recently there are images of a Yak-130, a Russian made trainer arriving in Iran. Now this could be a clear sign that the Su-35 is about to show up, but if you just throw a pilot into a Su-35 after flying a Cessna, uh, you're going to have a really expensive one flight training mission when that pilot has to eject out of the Su-35. So the Yaks showing up are most likely the precursor to the Su-35s to try to get some of these Iranian pilots trained up and perhaps even for the Iranian Air Force to determine whether the Su-35s are reasonable and are capable of being flown by their pilots. They might take the Yaks and they might turn those into fighters themselves, since these could double as light fighter aircraft, which would kind of model something like the US made T7, potentially the US made F5, basically a lighter version aircraft that is a little more forgiving and doesn't take as much training to be able to operate since the speeds would be a little bit slower and the handling characteristics would most likely be slightly easier to learn and master. And that's just my opinion as a fighter pilot myself, Having flown in the T-38, it was not necessarily a forgiving aircraft, but it was an aircraft that I feel like you could get relatively good at based on the different systems that it had, and it didn't have the complexities of the F-15E. Also showing up in more numbers are the Hesa Yasin, and this is just Iran's version of the trainer, so it's their version of the Yak-130 or of the US-made T-7, so they could be retrofitting those aircraft to also carry weapons, but again, most likely they will use those aircraft to train up their indigenous pilots on this Su-35. So now back to the story of intercepting an aircraft on the border of Iran and Afghanistan. Now that day I was flying a close air support mission, but I was also carrying a formidable air-to-air -air loadout with two AMRAMs and two AIM-9Xs. Therefore, the fighter jet I was flying was capable of handling any situation that was flown at us. And on a personal note, it felt really good being up there knowing that no matter what, whatever aerial warfare comes at us or ground warfare comes at us, we've got the chance to counter it. And that day I happened to be in the right place at the right time and I was tasked by higher headquarters called Pyramid to intercept an aircraft flying out of Iran. Now as I got closer to this aircraft, I started to see the characteristics of some sort of fighter jet. It didn't seem to be a drone, but it turned around right at the right time. So what could this have been? Well, the aircraft that I ran flies are the MiG-29, the F-14, the Su-22, the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom. So it could have been one of those aircraft. It could also have been one of their indigenous trainers. Most likely they knew that if they kept going, if they kept driving towards me, I would have had to uh, send them just a, a Christmas card, an F-15E Christmas card. Good night and good luck. Hope you guys enjoyed that video on Iran's aerial ambitions. If you have subjects that you would like me to cover, throw those in the comments below. The best compliment you can give me is just watch another one of these videos that'll pop up. That would really help me out a lot and it would help support the channel when you click on these videos. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you on the next video. If you wanna grab some merch and also support the channel, Max afterburner.co is where you can jump over there and find those. We've got a lot of new designs that'll be coming up in the next few weeks. Thanks for being here. We'll see you on the next video. Most of all, have a great day.